Hi, my name is Aya Fukuizumi from Nippo Medical School, Department of Pulmonary Medicine and Oncology. Today, I would like to share you one of our research, CAT N1 and SPC25 gene mutations in lung cancer patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, IPF, is the most common form of idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. IPF is chronic, progressive, irreversible, and lethal lung disease of unknown cause. IPF occurs in middle-aged and elderly adults and is associated with a histological or radiological pattern typical of usual interstitial pneumonia. IPF is also associated with an increased risk of lung cancer and the limitation of treatment, including chemotherapy and operation, due to pulmonary dysfunction or severe adverse events leads to the poor prognosis. The aim of this study was to investigate the genomic profiles of IPFLC and to explore the possibility of defining the carcinogenesis and potential therapeutic targets in IPFLC. 29 primary non-small cell lung cancer tissues with or without IPF and corresponding non-cancer lung tissue samples were obtained from 2013 to 2017, and whole exome sequencing was performed for cancerous and non-cancerous genomic DNA samples. This table shows you the characteristics of the 29 patients analyzed. As you can see, there were no significant difference between the IPFLC and non-IPFLC groups. This is the Kaplan-Meier curve revealing TFS in IPFLC and non-IPFLC of all 29 cases. TFS in the IPFLC group was significantly worse than that in the non-IPFLC group. Here I'm showing you the outline of the study design. Due to time constraints, I will meet the details of the methods, but I would like to emphasize the circumstance that we have collaborated with the Tokyo University of Science to perform an effective analysis from a massive and complex whole exome sequence data. We initially started from 8,868 gene mutations, and by training random and forest, we eventually identified 85 gene mutations associated with IPFLC. Of those, 40 mutations were specifically expressed in IPFLC. The prognostic potential of the 25 strong candidate genes in non-small cell lung cancer was further examined using the Kaplan-Meier plotter, and we ultimately identified CAD1 and SBC25 as a candidate gene mutations associated with IPFLC. This is the schema of CAD1 and SBC25 gene mutation. For CAD1, we hypothesized that the insertion of ACC may have caused a frame shift, resulting in the shedding of the extracellular domain of the transmembrane protein, CAD1, and a reduction in CAD1 expression. On the other hand, SPC25 gene mutation with a deletion of CTA at the splice site has been detected. We hypothesize that this splice mutation may have left one or more introns in the mature RNA, leading to aberrant production of SVC25. This chart shows you the mutation status of cat one and SVC25 in all 29 cases. In tumor tissues extracted from patients with IPFLC, cat one and SVC25 were mutated at a frequency of 47% and 53% respectively. Approximately one-third of patients with IPFLC had both mutations. CAD1 is a tumor suppressor gene from chromosome region 11q23. It was identified in non-small cell lung cancer by its tumor suppressor activity in new mice by Dr. Murakami in 1998. It is expressed in most tissues except for peripheral blood lymphocyte and is inactivated in 44% of non-small cell lung cancer and 30-60% to of various cancer. We examined the expression of CAD1 in clinical samples by quantitative RT-PCR. Its expression was lower in tumor tissues, particularly in the IPFLC group. In addition, CAD1 mutants express lower levels of CAD1. We next 
investigated the expression status of cadmium 1 by immunohistochemical analysis on 24 testable cases. Now I'm showing you is the representative of cadmium 1 protein expression in number 1 normal lung and number 2 lung tissues from patients with UIP and number 3 and 4 non small cell lung cancer. Sediated bronchial epithelium and smooth muscle cells showed moderate intensity in normal lung. Regenerated epithelial cells and fibroblasts in fibroblastic foci from patients with UIP showed weak to moderate staining. Number three, large cell neural endocrine calcinoma showed negative immunostaining. Number four, squamous cell calcinoma showed moderate immunostaining, while interstitial cells of the desmoplasia showed intense immunostaining. There was no correlation between the expression detected by RT-PCR and IHC in individual cases. However, when we examined the protein status, the H score, the results were similar to those yielded by RT-PCR. SBC25 is a component of the Kinegore associated NDC80 complex. NDC80 is responsible for kinegore spindle fiber interaction and activation of the spindle checkpoint in mitosis. Of normal expression of NDC80 components leads to cancer development, and the overexpression of SBC25 is frequently found in breast cancer and lung cancer. The expression of SBC25 by quantitative RT-PCR was higher in tumor tissues than corresponding normal tissues, Notably, this increase was significantly greater in the IPFLC group. SBC25 mutants had higher SBC25 expression, whereas SBC25 wild-type cases had lower SBC25 expression. Representative of SBC25 protein expression in number 1, normal lung, and number 2, lung tissues from patients with UIP, number 3, and 4, no small cell lung cancer. Metaplastic bronchial epithelial cells lining honeycomb lungs showed increased signals compared with the controls and non small cell lung cancers. As the same with cadmium 1, there was no correlation between the expression detected by RT PCR and IHC in individual cases. However, when we examined the protein status, the H score, the results were similar to those yielded by RT PCR. The kaplan meier plot was used to evaluate the prognostic potential of cadmium 1 and SBC25. The analysis indicated that of a total of 1,925 patients with lung cancer, patients with lower cadmium 1 and higher SBC25 expression had shorter overall survival. Next, we perform pathway analysis to clarify the signaling pathway associated with cadmium 1 and SBC25. And it was found that TGF beta 1 was a common signaling pathway involved in cadmium 1 and SBC25 expression. Cadmium 1 expression was upregulated following stimulation of TGF beta 1 in A549 cells and accompanied by decreased E cadherin and increased in pimentin expression. Inhibition of cadmium 1 suppressed TGF beta 1 induced EMT in A549 cells. Furthermore, cadmium 1 knockdown markedly accelerated the proliferation of A549 cells. SBC25 was also overexpressed in response to the EMT phenomenon following exposure to TGF beta 1. Knockdown of SBC25 increased the expression of E-cadherin and decreased that of bimension showing TGF beta 1 induced EMT. In addition, SBC25 inhibition reduced the TGF beta 1 induced expression of CD133, which is associated with cancer stem cell properties. Moreover, knockdown of SBC25 strongly inhibited the proliferation of A549 cells, suggesting that SBC25 is a therapeutic target for IPFLC. Finally, we attempt to identify therapeutic agents for IPFLC. SBC25 is involved in kinecore and microtubule at interactions and spindle checkpoint activity associated with G2M arrest. 
In fact, inhibition of SPC25 suppressed PH3, indicating T2M arrest and upregulated cleave part. We assess whether SPC25 expression is reduced by treatment with standard agents used in patients with non small cell lung cancer and IPF. Increased levels of cleave PARP were observed after treatment with cabaplatin and pemetrexid. In contrast, treatment with paclitaxel significantly suppressed expression of SBC25 and PA3 and increased data of cleave PARP. These results suggest that the combination of paclitaxel and cabaplatin may be a reasonable treatment option for IPFLC. Treatment of cancer stem cells with DNMT1 inhibitor and HDAC inhibitor demonstrated that inhibition of chromatin modifiers repressed growth-promoting signaling molecules such as SBC25. In fact, using evidence from the Gene Expression Profiling Interactive Analysis 2 database, a positive correlation between SBC25 and DNMT1 expression was found in non-small cell lung cancer. Treatment of PC10 lung cancer cells with DNMT1 inhibitor 5AZA successfully reduced the expression of SBC25 and reactivated CADN1. And treatment with 5AZA significantly inhibited the proliferation of PC10 cells. Hence, 5AZA may be a promising therapeutic agent for IPFLC. So here are our conclusions. Of the 85 genes, we focused on tumor suppressor gene CADA1 and oncogene SBC25, both of which were specifically mutated in IPFLC. According to the IPA pathway analysis, TJ-beta-1 was caught as a common phenomenon. Downregulation of CADA1 expression and upregulation of SBC25 by genetic mutation may be involved in IPFLC carcinogenesis via EMT regulation. Paclitaxel is a key drug for IPFLC. 5-AZA DNMT1 inhibitor may be a promising therapeutic agent for IPFLC. Thank you for listening.